Whoa, look what you just stumbled upon. You're going to love these videos, I hope. Please leave comments down below and click that subscription button. Hey, if you guys haven't uh, had a chance to take a look at my Patreon account, uh, please go, go on over there and check that out. I'm going to have a uh, little, little, uh, you know, insider tutorials and insider videos kind of like giving you some tricks of the trade and stuff i got about 20 years of experience working commercial work um so i've picked up a couple of things not a whole lot but a couple of things <laughs> just kidding um but yeah you know take a look up at my patreon and if you guys can make a donation that'd be hugely helpful um i'm just kind of doing these tutorials on my own time and taking away from my family and all so hopefully you guys can do a little something something that'd be awesome all right, back to the tutorial. Right now we're gonna go through some uh, color correction. So we got the two the two view up. Let's go ahead and hit Control One to just bring up the one view. Let's click on that Control One. There we go. Okay, so taking a look at at our little preview window here, our program window. Let's just kind of dive in a little bit more into what all these little tabs and everything are. If you go over here to the options, you can click on this, and this is where you can kind of you can pull up your audio desk. So here's your, your faders and stuff for all your different independent audio tracks, uh, your track routing. Um, there's also this EQ section for each of the channels, uh, which is pretty cool. I kind of like how they, how they have developed this. Um, pretty interesting. And then if you want to go to the overlays, so we can pull up, you know, a 69 safe title. You know, this is one that we we use all the time for our our video broadcast standards and stuff and you know, we want to have a little bit of room here you you guys already know i'm not going to talk talk about that why waste time right so this is all set up you can change colors and stuff i'm for some reason i'm on this purple kick right now i don't know why so i got purple and yellow why not you know i think it defaults like green and red i was like oh green and red oh, that's, that's kind of boring hey look at that i can customize it making my own color sweet okay and then you can also turn on grids and stuff so pixel grid row grids whatever those uh, come in handy man i used to use those all the time i kind of forgot about grids i hardly ever use them anymore but anyways maybe i'll start doing them you can pull up your scopes there's our scopes Show viewing settings. I don't know what this is. I never look at that. Show markers. If you want to pull up all your markers. I know some people really utilize markers a lot more than what I do. You know, skipping around the marker, marker, this, that. I like to just have that visual representation on my timeline of knowing, oh, hey, there. here's my transition point. Here's another transition point. Um, let's go ahead and get started on some color correction. Um, so this being the timeline, we can apply effects by clicking on effects. And then you can choose image or look. You can bring up a color correction, color corrector, color warper. Um, you go into Matchbox and pull up some other color correction tools within that. We're going to click on image. And then what that brings up is this little image tab. If you double click on this, this brings us into the effects tab. So down at the bottom, you have media hub, conform, timeline, spend a lot of time on timeline in the beginnings of my projects and then um, we'll jump we'll still be in the timeline area but then we'll jump in the batch and action but i don't really utilize these batch and action tool sets kind of different workflow it's like the old school uh, workflow is like going into a batch creating the batch exporting that batch to your desktop which would be here um, and then bringing that into your into your edit somehow um, I am a timeline editor, so I work that way. So we're going to go ahead and click on that effects tab, which is image that brings us into the master grade. This master grade is a matchbox preset or I don't even know, a, a matchbox effect. Man, I'm terrible with the terminology in this. In this. <laughs> oh, but hey, you know, I'm not big on terminology. I like to push buttons and make things look pretty. So, <laughs> all right, here we go. Okay, so once we go into the image tab, we're going to be on this master grade. That's what defaults to. And then that master grade is actually utilized within Matchbox. It's a Matchbox plugin effect. So my overall look 
if we kind of back out and you just hit the, hit the exit there, my overall look for this whole spot is going to be a muted, muted colors. So taking out the chroma of the colors and shift it over to more of a yellowish, orangish, uh, kind of dreary, kind of, you know, zombie apocalypse, walking dead type of a type of a look and feel in my head vision for, for this whole this whole concept. So jumping back into that image tab, we're going to bring out the saturation. You can kind of see how that just drops away down. I don't want it to be really dropped out all the way. I just want it to be muted a little bit. We can go on into this tone tab. Let's kind of increase the contrast, make it a little bit more darker and dab. Um, if we do want to bring up some scopes, we're going to right click in the gray area, go to scopes and show. Okay, and then it comes up with just a single scope view across the whole spectrum. If you go down here, you can click on one up, two up, three up. We're going to do a two up or as you can see is option two. So if we go option one, that's Ooh, the one up, option two is the two up, option three is a three up view. Since we're doing color grading, I wanna see my image and I wanna see my scope. So over here, let's go ahead and right click and choose scopes. And it just defaults to a two view scope. If we go into the scopes, so I'm just right clicking going down the scope so I can go to settings. And I actually can go into the settings, choose two up. If you click on the presets widget, that's how you can determine which scopes are in the two up view for you. So that's pretty handy. We're going to leave it like that. Let's go ahead and just kind of scrub in here, kind of see. That's going to be cool. Let's go ahead and go back to this master grade tab. So it was on the surface tab. I'm just going to go to master grade and then the tone. If I click on here, it's going to take me to the primaries of that. And that's where I was actually adjusting things. If you kind of notice that. So I click on this arrow here, it brings me to the primaries and here is where things have been ma manipulated and stuff. So here's our, our muted color. Let's go ahead and just kind of swing the colors on over to Oh, see, that's a little too magenta-y. Let's just kind of bring that on down. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it. You can also use your scope over here. See how it just kind of swings it around and stuff. But, oh, where's it? It's going to make me a liar. Don't do that. There it is. There how it's swinging around there. See, that's, that's actually kind of an interesting look. Kind of going bluish. Bluish, more magenta-y. There's kind of the red, reddish, yellowish spectrum. I kind of like that orangish kind of a thing. We can really ramp it up by, you know, increasing that saturation there. That's kind of a cool little look. Let's do something like that. So that's a uh, shot number one. So shot number two is like quite a bit different. So what we're going to do is since I like that, that orangish look, I want to kind of keep, keep around that same spectrum. I'm going to click and drag that onto the footage here. So that's going to copy over the same thing, but this is a very dark shot. So let's go ahead and like just kind of bring that, that darkness up. So the saturation, that's not what I was doing. So we're going to go to the S curve. Just bring that back down to zero. If I hold down control, see how this is up? I hold down control and click, that zeroes it out. Let's go ahead and bring up the midtones a little bit and the shadows a little bit, just kind of bring some life back into this. Like I like it being dark, but compared to my other shot, it's just too dark. So there's that. I think we're actually gonna need to shift this edit to something like right in here. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, look at that, it is right there. Oh, no, see, okay. Let's go ahead and shift this edit. I don't like it being way back there. I'm kind of watching this, this pillar. I'm going to use that pillar as a transitional element. I'm going to comp some stuff back behind it. So I want to get that pillar, like something like right in there. So we're going to have some boxes and stuff comped in behind this pillared element. And then we're going to comp out that pillar to actually be a transition point going from this piece into this piece. So that'll be good. Okay. So back to the color grading. That's looking a little bit better. It's a little bit greenish and stuff still. Let's go ahead and see if we can, um, oh, tone curves. Let's go into tone. 
See, I'm kind of seeing some green in these areas here. So that's going to be more of a mid-tony, shadowy area. Let's see here. See if I kind of go into the mid-tones and just kind of ramp up that same color, that orangish color. That looks like that's kind of doing a little bit better. What, what does it do in the in the blacks? That's kind of a cool thing. That's like obviously way too much. But let's go ahead and just dial that back a little bit in the into there. And the highlights, I don't want to really manipulate. The highlights are already kind of you know orangish enough for us. So we're gonna do something like that. Just kind of A B those. You know, definitely it's a different shot. It's down in a dark dungeony little area, so it's gonna look different. I think for what we're doing here, that's gonna be fine. Okay, so this shot here is very, very similar to this opening shot. So let's go ahead and click that image and copy it on over to there. Another way of copying it is if you right click on it, you can copy and then you can then paste it onto different clips that way too. Let's just go ahead and walk through that workflow. So we're gonna select it, copy. So I've got these two shots all these shots here. We'll just go ahead and select all of them, holding down shift and selecting, right clicking, and then paste image is what that's gonna, that's gonna paste that effect. We'll see it snap in there. There we go. Whatever clip I have selected is what's gonna show all the effects here. That pretty much makes sense. I, I have a feeling to you guys. And here's the image effect for that. So if we wanna just bypass it, we just click this little button and there it's, it's bypassed. Okay, so this shot, and that shot are looking pretty, pretty close, pretty, pretty good. I think that's a good. This one here is looking a little too orangey for me still, like too much chroma in it. So we can take a look in those first shots, the chroma was way down here. This shot, you can see it really spiking up. So let's go ahead and bring the saturation down even further on that. Just get it to match in a little bit better on our scope. And then here's our last shot. That one's looking pretty good. Maybe we'll just kind of bring up the, the mid-tones a little bit. Let's kind of go on in here, bring up the mids, bring up the shadows just a skosh. I'm fine with losing blacks in, in, in scenes like this. To me, it adds more to the shot. I know like, you know, diehard colors would be like, oh, your blacks are clipping and you know, you're losing all the information. But for me, I'm not afraid of losing information. Like to me, black is a good thing because I like black. <laughs> okay, so that's our coloring for everything. That shot's kind of sticking out a little too much for me. You know, I'd go back in and do some tweaking on things and stuff. But that there is basically the coloring of these shots. All right, in the next series of videos, we're gonna be uh, introducing some uh, titles to these to these scenes. Uh, and to be able to get those titles kind of like move with the shots, we're gonna be tracking them to certain points within our scenes. Um, this first scene will be tracking to uh, some trees to kind of get the CG to kind of move up in the scene with us and still have that same movement of the camera walking. You can obviously tell that the camera guy here was walking. You can see it bouncing back and forth. We want to translate that same movement into our CGs to kind of just follow through with that Walking Dead-esque kind of a look and stuff. And with this next scene, we're going to be tracking everything into points on, on these shots. You know, we're going to be masking out this pillar, masking out some stuff, utilizing G-Mask in Batch, and I think also G-Masks in, um, in Action, which are two basically the same things, but they have different attributes to them. I wanted to point those out to you guys. We'll go ahead and get started on those in the next series of videos, guys. Um, once again, thank you very much for taking a listen to this and checking it out. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feedback, Please post some comments into the into those fields down below and let's chat it all up, buds. Check out my band page, Fade to Black, on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, and everything else. Hey, if you guys like these tutorials, please subscribe and click the bell if you want to get notified. Tons more tutorials coming up.